Hey, and welcome back to another Revit 2020 video. In this video, we'll be looking at all the Revit 2020.1 updates when it comes to architecture. Most of these updates are quality of life. Let's get right into it. So I've got a schedule, basic wall schedule pulled up here from the model, pulling out all the walls. And if you notice, there's an extra button up here in the top modify schedule panel. And the extra button is called Stripe Rows. And just remembering the quality of life that is added in 2020.1, I bet you can guess what this button does. I'm going to press it now. And yeah, we can see all every other row is striped with gray. All this does is make schedules a little easier to read. Uh, of course, I like it. This is, this is sometimes hard to read. And once you get really long schedules, it is sometimes hard to see and track the data across the screen. So striping it and seeing gray bars and every other line and every other row, that makes perfect sense. And I really like this as small as it is. Now the downside is I have the same schedule on a sheet. And if I go back to the schedule, I have stripe rows checked there, but it, it basically this does not work by default when you put schedules on a sheet. That's okay, there's still extra formatting that you can do to achieve that, but it's not as easy as that one click stripe rows button is for the schedule view. The next thing we'll look at is on a floor plan, a basic floor plan, we'll go to the analyze tab. What was new in Revit 2020, we were able to analyze the path of travel. So we could set a point and Choose, an end, uh, choose a start point and end point and Revit would calculate the path around certain objects to give you a path of travel. But now we've, I, we actually have a new button here and it's called Reveal Obstacles. And if I click this, it's going to reveal every obstacle that the path of travel tool is going to avoid. And this is, this is really nice just to see and make sure that when you're using the path of travel tool that Revit is taking into account everything that you need it to. In this case, I'll zoom in here on the kitchen. This is a countertop and obviously I, I need to walk around the countertop when I'm calculating path of travel. So that's really nice to know. We have that it's a click. It's a quick toggle reveal obstacles button and it works like a charm. Again, just another quality of life update. There is a small update to the path of travel tool itself. When I go into the path of travel, I'll first be prompted to choose a start point. And if I choose the point here in the middle of the kitchen, I'll just choose the end of this door here. And we can see we get the path calculated as we would expect. We can click on the path and, and see the start and end point. But what's new in 2020.1 is that I have the option to easily move the start or end point of this line on the fly. I don't have to delete it or make a new one or anything like that. So maybe I want to come down here and exit out of this other door. So I can come down and move the end point all the way over here and it, that path is instantly recalculated, which is fantastic. Another new feature in Revit 2020.1 is when we click on this path, we can see we have two new parameters over here. One that's called from room and the other called to room. And in this case, with this path selected, I see I have kitchen 110 as from room. Currently nothing to room. So let's change this endpoint over here to this door here as if we were going to exit out of that door. And now we can see that when we click on the path, we now have from room kitchen 110 and to room media room 101. This is the media room. It's just another quality of life update, giving you parameters to show where this path starts and where it ends by room. Another update to Revit 2020.1, and again, this is another quality of life update, is I'll, I'm gonna make a few walls. I'm on a roof plan, just for reference. I'm gonna create some walls here create those walls and I'm going to create a roof. I'm going to choose these walls and I'm going to accept that, finish the edit and I'm 
immediately prompted with, would you like to attach the highlighted walls to the roof? We're, we're used to seeing this dialogue, but it's the options that have changed. You can see by default, which is bolded in blue, don't attach is is selected. And so if I press enter, I will not have these walls attached to the roof. And we can tell that because the walls are popping through the roof. I'm going to hit undo, get back into the dialog. I will finish the edit mode and again be prompted by this attach roof. And now I'll actually choose attach. And we can see now I, the walls are not popping through the roof and I can see them below the roof when I select it, telling me that they're attached properly. This is not a new tool by any means, but it's an update to the dialog box. It, it, it makes things, or it makes using the roof tool make more sense because it will allow you to know and easily, more easily translate whether you want to attach walls or not. Again, not a big change, just mainly a quality of life update. And finally, the last quality of life update for Revit 2020.1, I would say this is one of the biggest ones. If I go to the insert tab, and I'm in, I'm in a 3D view, if, I'm in, if I go to the insert tab and I go to link CAD, I actually have the option to link in SketchUp files directly. And that's fantastic. Whether you like using SketchUp, whether you use it or not, I'm sure that you know someone who uses it. And a lot of times you're going to get or need to reference SketchUp models in Revit. So I've got just a basic SketchUp model house from the 3D warehouse. And something else to note is the inches. You might have to fiddle with this based on the units of the SketchUp file. But I know this, this SketchUp file is in inches. So I'll... I'll hit OK and I'll open it up. I don't see anything right now because I wonder where the model is. I will double click the middle mouse button to zoom extents and I can see right here is the linked SketchUp model. And we can confirm that it's a linked SketchUp model by seeing import symbol and then the file name dot SKP. And that's really helpful. Now the next thing I the first thing I immediately tried was you know how can we use this well it, by default it's pinned it's basically a CAD file and it it more or less functions like an imported CAD file which is great so I can go to the architecture tab hit wall and choose pick line and I I can actually pick any one of these lines to start drawing Revit walls which is completely awesome I'm not a fan of SketchUp per se but I know lots of people in our office use SketchUp, and a lot of times I have to reference SketchUp models to build Revit models. So now I can begin to build schematic models in Revit directly from SketchUp models. The final Revit 2020 update has to do with a couple Dynamo nodes, actually, and I'll put them up on the screen now. They are just a couple of nodes that play into the path of travel tool, which is really nice. Uh, they also play well with those new parameters that we mentioned. And there's a basic update node, which means whenever you make these updates in Revit, you could see the changes populated immediately in Dynamo. And that's all the Revit 2020.1 updates, most being quality of life, most not being a big deal, but at the end of the day, they are new updates and are welcomed for sure. If you learned something, please leave me a like. And if you enjoyed this video, you're welcome to subscribe. Be on the lookout for more Revit videos coming soon. Thanks for watching.